Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today's painting is this sunset palm tree. And if you have never painted before in your life, this is an excellent painting to paint um, to start with, let alone even painting at home for the first time. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps. It's gonna be a lot more fun than you realize and you're gonna do better than you expect from yourself. And that's generally the best part about painting. Um, as we go through the process, I want you to be nice to yourself. Be kind, um, don't overanalyze your process or what you're creating. And I want you to get through the entire painting before you look at it and uh, analyze what you've done. So as we paint today, in the description box below, there is gonna be a link for a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting. With that being said, if you wanna switch out colors on today's painting, or you wanna do this painting a second time and switch out colors, I highly recommend that. Um, I'm just gonna give you a uh, kind of a general overview of how to paint this painting, but I encourage that you add your own creativity, add your own colors, add other elements into it, but again, make it your own, because that's kind of the beauty of art. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do that. Check out my other videos. Uh, most of these are geared towards first time a beginner painters to kind of take away that scary aspect of painting at home. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for what you want in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. Hi right, guys, I hope you're ready to paint today. This one's gonna be really fun, especially for my first time painters. So head on over to where you have your setup and I want you to turn your favorite music on. It just keeps you more relaxed. And as always, take your progress photos. Now we're gonna start with the large or medium flat brush and we're gonna make a light yellow color. And that's white with adding some yellow to it. And we're gonna go over to the bottom left-hand corner of the canvas and go up about four, three to four inches. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and just place a dot. Now, if you wanna make sure that these are straight, you can do the method that I was just demonstrating. You can put your thumb in the bottom corner and your finger where your dot is, hold that position and move to other spaces on the canvas to make your dot. And then you're gonna connect the lines. Now, as we do the background, there's three brush strokes I want you to try. First is using the full width of the brush, creates a pretty large space. Then you can turn the brush sideways and create a bit of a skinnier line, or everybody's favorite is making X marks, and we call this cross hatching. So try all those brush strokes, and whichever one is the most comfortable for you, go ahead and stick with that one. So now we're gonna take that light yellow paint and we're gonna fill in from that horizon line to the bottom of our canvas. And I believe I leave the corners kind of blank, but if you fill it in completely, that's okay. And then we're gonna kind of start adding this color kind of in an abstract shape. So you just can look at what I paint and kind of mimic that shape just a little bit. At the top of the canvas, I did add more white into my mixture. So that way it's a little bit lighter. And as you can see on the palette, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to how I'm mixing the paint. I'll actually grab kind of a slap of one color and a slap of another, and then go back to the canvas. So I don't want you to stress about getting the exact shade or um, mixing your paint perfectly. So I want you to take, pause the video, take your progress photo. And while the paint is wet, we're gonna grab that yellow paint and paint right on top of our light yellow. Now we're gonna add a little bit of orange for kind of a sherbet color. And again, you can see that I'm mixing it in kind of a chunky manner. It doesn't have to be an exact science. And each person's gonna have a slightly different shade. So with this light sherbet color, kind of doing the same thing, filling in the bottom of the space, and then gonna be placing it in a few random areas above our horizon. Now, as we paint our background, if you like or dislike a particular color, you can either skip it, add more of it, or not add it at all, completely your choice. 
And as we fill up the canvas space, we're all kind of abstract painters. So don't, don't overanalyze too much of what you're doing. The composition kind of gets defined when we put our palm trees on here. So again, right now you're just moving paint on canvas. Very therapeutic, very stress relieving. All right, so now we're gonna add a touch of red, kind of picked it up on the brush, and we are slapping it on top of our other colors on our background. And because our background is still wet, we're gonna kind of blend a little bit of this red color into the colors already on our background. And you can see as you move your brush on top of it and do this wet on wet blending, um, it kind of changes shade a little bit. It starts mixing with the colors underneath. If your canvas is already starting to dry, you can add a touch of water to your brush. Um, and you can see that I'm doing that a little bit here. All I'm doing is touching the tips of my bristles to the water and then using very light pressure, moving, uh, kind of blending the two colors on the canvas. Each one of you is gonna find a different balance with the amount of water, with the amount of paint, with the amount of blending that you're gonna do. So feel free to try a few different things and see what works for you. And most of that usually comes from just painting more. And I encourage everybody to paint on a monthly basis. It is very therapeutic. All right, so again, adding a little bit more red, added some more yellow. You can go back to any of these colors and add more or less of them. And again, just kind of notice how you are finding your comfort with some blending. All right, so we cleaned the brush really good. And then I want you to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna move into white paint and kind of put a base on the remaining canvas space showing. And then with this, we're gonna do a different type of blending method to make a light pink. So again, using that white, just kind of fill up the remaining canvas space right above that horizon line. And again, you're applying it kind of thick. So that way we can blend a little bit of pink into that. And here you can see I'm making a light pink. And then we're taking that and we're gonna slap it right on top of the white paint we just applied to the canvas. And because that white paint was there first, and we're applying the light pink on top of it, we're allowed to make um, an even lighter pink as we mix the two colors. And here you can see I'm getting a bit more darker pink and placing it on top of the white. Now we're grabbing some blue and basically going right over that horizon line that we put at in the beginning. And this gives us kind of a high contrast in our sky background kind of at the edge of the water. And this just makes for a very bold composition. If you don't wanna add this and you prefer red or purple or um, more orange, feel free to switch this out to any color. And again, if you're holding your breath, take a deep breath, you're doing a great job. You're transforming a white canvas. All right, so here we grabbed purple and again, going right above that horizon line, mixing it in with the blue. And I am painting kind of fast for this so that way I can continue to do that wet on wet blending. Whatever style, whatever speed you end up painting today, that's just your style for today. Embrace it. And just know that you can paint in a different style on another day. You can try something else. All right, you're doing great. All right, so here we're gonna grab some red, place it on top of some of those darker spaces, those blues, and in a few other areas. So here I kind of slapped it on there, and then I am using very light pressure on the brush to softly blend it with the surrounding colors. And kind of using kind of short, choppy brush strokes. Again, find what's kind of comfortable for you. Here I grabbed a bit more purple, throwing it on there, just still trying to get that corner a little bit darker, that horizon line a little bit darker. And if you are going back and forth between these colors, 
Sometimes you need to wipe your brush off, wipe off the excess paint, and then you can do a bit more of the blending. Uh, sometimes my students actually hold a couple of brushes, one's there where they will apply the paint, and then the other one's just kind of a almost a dry brush or a little wet brush to do a little bit of blending. When you do this blending by adding a little bit of water to your brush and then moving the paint on the canvas, you can only go so far with it. So find a nice balance, less is more, with the amount of water that you do or that you add to your painting for this type of blending. Less is more. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And now we're gonna move into black paint and small pointy brush. And we're gonna put our islands in the water. And using that pointy brush, starting up over by the horizon line, kind of where you want your island to end, place your brush there, and then drag your brush along that horizon line. Then we'll be starting at the end again and making the top of our island. It can be mountainous, it can be hilly. Uh, but kind of draw that outline and then you're going to fill it in with the black paint. And be generous with the amount of black paint that you put on there. You do want this to be very opaque, very thick. Um, so that way you don't have to do two rounds of it. All right, so now we're adding our other island kind of hanging out in the middle of the water. Starting where I want the island to end and then pulling my brush to the left. And then starting at the end and then moving up for the top perimeter of the island and then filling in the space. You can add as many or few islands as you like. This is your painting. All right, it's pretty cool how it's starting to take shape with just the silhouettes of these islands on there. It's starting to define it, give it some composition. All right, so we have a third island on here, and this one I did backwards, starting at the left-hand side, and then moving out and making the outline of the island. And I didn't want this one super thick. I wanted to be able to see the water in between the two islands. But you can make your island a little bit bigger if you want, and if it overlaps that other left-hand side island by the horizon line, that is okay. If you want to make a volcano on one of yours, go right ahead. <laughs> actually had quite a few people make volcanoes in class when we do an island painting like this. Yeah, it's kind of funny. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and here are the steps that we're going to do for our palm tree, and I encourage you to practice this on a scrap sheet of paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the trunk first, and where you want the palm tree to end. That's where you're gonna place your brush and then just allow gravity to kind of pull your brush down to that front island. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Palm trees grow in a million different directions, but you're just gonna kind of use the pressure of your brush and make a thick tree trunk or palm tree trunk. All right, for the palm fronds, again, starting at that center, we're making kind of arms that come around and the first two are going to kind of hug the shape of that uh, palm tree tree trunk. Again, it's kind of like those first two arms just kind of reaching back towards the palm tree trunk and then the other ones are going to radiate out from it. Almost kind of like the spokes on an umbrella. And if one happens to be thicker than the other, don't worry about it. You're going to be putting leaves on here. And when we get into the leaves, mind the pressure of your brush. And I, we're going to make little dash marks. And each dash mark is a leaf on your palm tree. And we're going to be filling it on both sides of those palm fronds. And here you can see my individual leaves, but I'm going to encourage you to overlap these lines and kind of fluff out your palm tree. And it is going to look weird and awkward in the middle of just doing one palm tree compared to the rest. So once you start this, I want you to go all the way through and add all the leaves on each palm frond before you stop and before you step away from your painting and look at it from a distance. Especially for my first time painters, this is kind of an awkward stage to step back and look at it. So 
do all your palm leaves on here, make all your, your branches looking kind of fuzzy. And then I want you to go to the edge of the room and look at your painting from a distance. If your palm tree has a lot of space again in between their leaves, go back and just overlap those leaves. And you will get in a groove of making these dash marks. So every two or three brush strokes, I want you to go back and add more paint to your brush. Because again, you're going to get kind of in that groove making all these marks, but you won't actually be applying paint to the canvas. So every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. You can always add a touch of water for that fluidity, but again, never uh, you never want your brush dripping wet with water. If you need to turn your canvas upside down or sideways to make your palm leaves um, in a direction that's more comfortable for you, feel free to do that. I keep the painting in the same position just for the video. All right, now it's starting to look a bit more like a palm tree. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you for painting at home. It takes a lot of courage to do this, especially for a first time painter. So you should be very proud of yourself. When you are done, put your painting on the wall. Don't look at it until tomorrow morning or the next day. Cause right now your brain's remembering how much work, how much effort you have put into a blank white canvas to get it to this point. Tomorrow morning when you look at it, you'll just see this final image and how great a job you did. All right, so great job. Pause the video and take your progress photo. We're still gonna be using black paint and we're gonna be adding the grass from the bottom of the canvas. And again, it's just kind of a flick of the wrist starting at the bottom of the canvas. Doesn't matter if you have long grass or short grass. I do want you overlapping these brush strokes. And if you have your canvas in an easel, prop your canvas up and put it on the lip of the easel. So that way you can start your brush from underneath the canvas a little bit and then do the flick of the grass upward. Otherwise, if you leave it in that tray of the easel, you're gonna have a little kind of perimeter where the black paint isn't gonna hit. And again, as you're making your grass, overlap these so that way you have a really lush marsh, lush beach area that you're at. And again, a little bit of water on your brush will help with the fluidity and the movement of the brush. These strokes get easier the more that you do them. So be kind to yourself as you're making these. Some may be fat, some may be skinny. It's okay. Grass comes in many different shapes, widths, and varieties. You're doing a great job. Make sure you're breathing as you're doing these. All right, add a little bit of grass below your palm tree. You can even add some kind of sporadically around the islands if you want. And again, step away from your painting, look at it from a distance, see if you need grass in a different area or you need to fill out your palm fronds a little bit more. Go ahead and do that. Because our next step, we're gonna put the moon in. So we're gonna clean our brush really good and get all that black paint out. All right, so clean, pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna clean the brush really good and we're gonna make a light yellow. We're gonna place it on top of that kind of dark bluish purple above the horizon line. And for the moon, just place a dot and then make that dot bigger. That is generally the easiest way to do that. And then if you need to, add a little bit thicker paint and you can see here where I'm kind of coming in at a 45 degree angle, kind of sideways. So that way I can move the paint a little bit thicker and have a bit more opaque coverage. If your moon happens to grow a little bit in this process, that's okay. 
you just have a fuller moon. All right, so great job, you guys. You should be really proud of yourself, especially my first time painters out there. I'm really proud of you. So keep painting, keep finding your creative outlets. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process. Hopefully you are more relaxed right now than when you first started your painting and keep up the good work. I want you to try to find a way to paint at least once a month. It's really healthy for you. Um, as you're uploading these to social media, please tag me, Paint with Lovejoy or at Paint with Lovejoy. Um, your feedback, your pictures really help me move forward and create more videos because I am a solo show here. So seeing what you guys do at home, like I said, gives me enough motivation to kind of paint and continue to produce these videos. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Leave any uh, comments, questions, concerns, issues. Leave those in the comment box below. I try to respond as quickly as possible. Um, but again, it's through your interaction in this community that we're creating that we're all gonna grow together. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored that you chose one of my videos. I'm glad you had a good time and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. All right, let's check and see if we got any planes coming. I like this angle because then I can see what's going on. All right. Well, we got a plane coming right now. Um, all right.